that's 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 uh, passable. So I can, yeah, that, that's passable, Jeff. I've got it. Um, what I've done is I've laid the tripod on its side, and to try and keep its balance, I've slid the foam so that the grip is is like a base. Um, so you can show what I mean. So I see at the moment the screen keeps going black, which is bloody annoying. Shake your mat. Oh, it's. I think this actually this actually might be a better recording situation, even though it's in portrait, not landscape, than it is using. Um using t tablet because yeah. there's no reflection on this because I'm simply recording the TV the other thing is I hope that um, the it's the audio part that I hope it picks up the audio um, loud enough which I'll, I'll know later <laughs> right so uh, I know the feeling but Second can now. I've got another couple of cans in the fridge, so I'm sorted. The four cans of Henry that was four twenty nine at Tesco's is now it's gone up by about twenty p. So it's about the same price for four cans of Henry as it is at Asda. Yeah, I do. I get, that's where I get mine from, Asda's. But it's still, apparently, it's price matched with Aldi. Uh, which I think is a lot of bollocks because it was only a few weeks back it was 4 29 for four. Surely they'll keep it at 4 29 and it'll be cheaper than Aldi. Do you know where uh, last week when we did we, we did our very first Sir Dennis Hodge conference call? Yeah. Did you notice uh, how much Henry Henry Jack Daniels our supping? No, didn't really notice it. Well. The thing is, yeah. Well, the thing is, with the litre bottle, it's just it is deceptive because it was about halfway. So, you you imagine that bottle you got there. Imagine that's a litre bottle, right? Yeah. So imagine it's about halfway, and then I'd supped. Basically, there was if you look at the bottom of the bottle, you imagine. Uh, that, that much left off the bottom mm -hmm. from, from that yeah. to that yeah so it's probably just under half a bottle because I, I remember when I was talking to you I, I, I could even I said god I sound I sound pissed <laughs> you, sp you spread that over 14 hours and I know it's different yeah, it's but like you, for me, my only my only worry was introducing the third element. You will have to. Uh, we'll have to exchange Henry for Jacks. No, instead. not 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 too much because I do like me Henry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if I you reckon, um, stick to, stick to Jacks and have Henry occasional, and. You know, like I said earlier, in there, if it's 
If it goes down the tree, it goes down. You know, yep. it, it, it don't get, get fixed. Yeah, I think it ought to be like uh, a bit more more emphasis on the Henry. Yeah. Uh, but measured gaps between the copy, copy, copy. Uh, as long as it's a measured gap in between each slurp of Sir Jacques Daniels, because um, you know many a time you know I felt all right, I relaxed. Um, although the second successive Friday night, I've stayed up and no Friday night horse around with with Chris Barron on Instagram. It could be that he, he, I do know he did fly out to do some writing with the Spin Doctors for, for a new Spin Doctors album. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to catch him uh, this Friday coming. And... Uh, You know the beauty of this is I, I can unplug, no, I don't unplug this because I've actually done it 5%, but I can go into the kitchen and this phone will be, it's, I think this is this could be a better recording situation. I just hope that, say, that the audio uh, man is one way out, round, no, I didn't, I can't do that because Unlike the old phones, uh, the 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 uh, the seem to have removed the headphone jack with the modern yeah. phones. It's either you either have your headphones on or you're charging. I don't know why they removed the headphone jack. Right, my ass is empty. Yeah. And this, look, this is the glass I've got, you see, look. Oh, yeah. So, mine my... Is the, mine is the, the official 44mm. Well, this is an official Jack Daniels glass. Um, has, it, has it got the, um, the Drax hologram at the back, like mine? Well, this is it's got it's got this, it's it's got a signature at the bottom. <laughs> let me let, let me just uh, go and get the Henry. And hopefully the sound recording will be all right. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Fucking twatting thing. I need to, I need to do something to this. If I'm gonna use this method, I need to do something so that the screen stays on longer. Because even though I unlocked it, uh, the bloody television with that had a black screen with a, with a pissing padlock floating across. I plug that in there. It's too. It's it's. It must be an ultra power saving because it's. Um, With, with the burger thing it all depends on the weather uh, we had some sausages the other day uh, other week I said do you fancy uh... so mother, mother we had some leftover sausages that mother gave us from butchers let's do it again so I'm just going to sort out the settings on this bastard because it's annoying me um, how can I do that? Could be battery, maybe. Ten minutes. More display settings. Yeah, you were saying opportunity up uh, step to on so two films. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, I got that. Uh well it's that it's ironic. That the part that Vincent Price plays, yeah, not but not bad film. I'm not going to rush. It. I know Ian McShane plays a good part. Um, it's ironic that in that Tower of London. Um, no. Okay, well. All right at the time, but I won't get it myself. Yeah. Not not my cup of tea. Watch, yeah, watch a few with the thought, yeah, that's all right. Not too bad. Oh, and this one. Mm. Henry A. Kenneth Banner. So, Henry V? Henry V, yeah. Mm. Oh, same as mine. That's fine, yeah. Brilliant. Great stuff. Jesus, how big's your stack? Hang on a minute. You can have a look. 
You 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 are in desperate need of some shelving, aren't you? Look, there you go. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to get another one. Have you got happy ever after? Yeah. No. Fifteen, no. 15 quid at Sainsbury's. Yeah. Honestly, Jeff, I mean, you're too late for who done it. I know you don't like game shows, but it's worth it for the people who star it alone. Um, but you can't get it now for love the money. So you have to pay over the fucking odds for it. I don't know what's happened in the last few months. Uh, well, I wasn't ready for it anyway back then. But we, I mean, we, I, I finally watched the complete first series of, with Edward Woodward at the helm, and it's quite good. It's really quite good. Uh, one episode features uh, um, John Pertwee as as guest panelist, and and because. I remember watching all the first disc, and then I watched the second disc, and I've got I got to say that I'm mightily impressed with Edward Woodward as as the host, um, and some of the people who start as trying to solve the crime, and then that start in the reenactment, you you think bloody hell, it's just amazing for them because. You know, Richard O'Sullivan, he's a guest panelist several times, as is Patrick Mower. Uh, and this gorgeous lass called um, Anushka Hempel, who, who was some kind of interior designer stroke actress. Um, who else is it? Uh, Lisa Goddard, she's in a few episodes. Terry Scott's in it twice as a panelist, and John Whitfield. And one episode, I don't know how the hell they got away with it. Nina Baden Semper and Jack Smethurst and at one point he she guess his joke and he goes that's one thing I can't stand black seat drivers and it's like I'm like there's a few times he goes on about you know and I think I know he's only in character But that won't be allowed these days. But uh, but one minute it's available on, on Amazon and network for like eighteen quid. Next minute you, you can't you can get it separately. Second hand copies about hundred and thirty quid on on bloody uh, eBay or Amazon. I'm like what? I'm going that's just taking piss. So, I mean, I got mine when it was 18 quid. Um, but Happy Ever After, it, it, I say it's just as equally as good. It's not quite as good, but it's, 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 a, it's a hair nose away from almost being as good as Terry and June. It really is. How's he like the new cat? Oh, he's, he's not bothered. He's not bothered by it at all. Oh, you tat. Here we go. Currently on telly, there's um, the bodyguard. Got on in the background while I choose the film. Yeah, what was with my choice? Yes, it's in the back, back background rather than watching it. Yeah. Right, uh, 
Oh, I, do you sh- do you sh- I mean, honestly, there's one episode of Happy Ever After where they have three daughters, the two daughters and a son in Happy Ever After, and Aunt Lucy stays with her minor bit, Gungy Ding. Whereas in. Uh, at, because the right is straight, they had to change a few things. The surname was changed, and they only had one daughter compared to two daughters and a son. Um, but it's just as good as the one of the daughters brings up and says, "Oh, I, I'm going to get engaged to." This. Um, it's in from the bar. You remember the episode of Terry and June, where he has that Western style barbecue. And then that yeah. posh kid come over with a yeah. bottle of yeah. wine. Pinky plonks. It's dull for oh, here. Yeah. yeah, well. And then he cooks about 10,000 burgers and nobody eats them. Oh, God, I better warn everyone. And they've been shoving them in plant pots and everything. Yeah. But I don't mind having him. He plays this Lord, this Lord Viscount Jim Summit. This set the same bloke in the iPad Drafter. And and of course Terry Scott's character gets goes down in the country tweeds and all that and he when they get to the house, um, he gets out this tuxedo with 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 the tails and that and and he's like, it's it's one it's one size too small, he says that's all they had, and then is this lawyer says, well what, what he says yes I been to the um cattle auction but I only got a couple of um, couldn't, couldn't get much the price were too high and then uh, Terry Scott walks in and he, and he goes good god who's that and June Whitfield turns to her daughter and goes don't look now darling but Fred Astaire's just turned up and he's there looking like the penguin from the Batman film took it took t- uh, Tuxedo with tails, one size too small, and he starts waddling towards him like a penguin. And June Whitfield goes to him, My husband, really? And his, tra- his trousers split. And then his wife, and then he says, Sorry that, uh, about that. So I, I don't, I've just been to the kettle auction, the prices were too high. Ah, I don't know where my wife is. Oh, the cow? Pardon? No, the Jerseys. Oh, yes. And his wife turns up and he goes, Is that, is that your husband? Really? He, he, as he bends down, his, his trousers split. But it's, uh, there's another one where he gets given a tease made as a, as a gift for Max Lucy. And he sets the alarm for half past seven. And it, and it goes off, and it, oh, what a beautiful, tea for two, and two for tea, me for you, and she's going, Terry, it's half past four, that's impossible, I set the alarm for half seven, it's half past four, Terry, and then I'll set it, and he says, why were you so long, so we had about 14 cups of tea, you know what they did, so he gives it to, um, his friend, who was played by Terence Alexander, who played the first Malcolm, and they had the same situation. It goes off three hours before they're supposed to, by the, the program it for eight o'clock, and it goes off at four o'clock, and he's going, "Like another cup of tea, darling? No, thank you. I've just had my second. I shall, right, what I'll do is I shall, no, I don't, not applicable to, not yet, not for the Jack's challenge. It's not, it's not, it's not going to be a challenge, it's just, um, mm. it's not much of a challenge, is it really? No, if, if, if it's allocated accordingly to where, we're not going to wake up in the morning with Ed's bang like a shit house door in Gale. That's that's my main way of, of, of introducing that third element. My, my old man's got a bottle of Jack at, uh, at kitchen, um, and I 
cold round today to cut the grass at the back. Um, we've been we've been to Carlton to get us lottery and that, and I went to Carlton Towers where there was there's there's a market on every Saturday and Sunday at Carlton Towers, and it's uh, free parking and. Wait, I did the videos from there, didn't I? Because as soon as we walked towards where the stalls and that were, uh, you, the smell of burgers and that was the oh, It was just burgers, hot dogs. Just love it. it was just floating. It was just it was just floating in the wind because it was a lovely sunny day. You know, Carlton Towers is. Queen's cousin owns the place, and uh, Gusha. There was actually a, a store called Magic and Son Home Bakers. Turns out that there were mother and son from Gdansk in Poland. That uh, at the moment it's based at home. Uh, they live in Selby, and um, it was an apple crumble. It was like a um, Cornish pasty kind of look to it, but it was infused with apple crumble, and it and it, and it were it were lovely. Um, oh, I I was I detected an accent. Oh, I went from Gdansk, and then oh, me too. And obviously around there's like uh, people doing burgers and hot dogs and tea stalls, and we went to the. Um, the front of the studio, there's, there's some seats. Uh, and obviously everyone else had bagged the ones in the shade. And we were sat. She said, oh, I'll get a, a, a Corona each. About two bottles, about five quid, which is cheap compared to what can pay in pubs. But we're like, we're like baking it some. And um, there was this table that had a canopy over it and two of the people had finished the drinks and had one woman with her daughter were like mother with daughter and with her mother and grandmother. Grandmother, I'll point you to the young daughter, great grandma and mother and that. They, they'd finished their drinks but this the, the, the young mother hadn't and I'm, and I'm going, fucking hell. It's like somebody when we've gone to bread before, um, not the you know, either the car park with the with the crane and you know, all the the car park next door to it, and you can see someone gets back to the car, they load the boot, they get in the car, and they see they spend about half an hour thinking, hmm, shall I have a sandwich, or not? Well, you've got to move on because you've got about fourteen cars. Your ass wanted the same spot. And then probably the fifth car behind it gets it because they finally decide to put key in ignition and fuck off. Um, I'll, 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 I'll see. Uh, uh, I mean, we could do the burgers in bloody oven if it's if it's quicker, if the weather's shite. Uh, but if, it's a, if, if we get to yours early, you know, say, no later than half eleven, get back for twelve. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, allow an half an hour for barbecue to get burned into it's glowing white. Uh, and then, hopefully one o'clock, um... One o'clock, uh, bish bash bosh. Um, you know, the rest of my shit for June, absolutely shite. It's unbelievable. Um, second injection for uh, COVID on Monday. Oh, right. There's, I can tell you now, in Happy Ever After, two episodes at least 
were rewritten with man alterations and were recycled for Terry and June. One episode is Terry in court where June has the accident with that dust cart. Um, the only difference being the witness who gets mumbled up with your words uh, in Terry and June it's um, Errol turns up at the barbecue going uh, ba 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 boopsie eh? Uh, you know, um, there was another episode. There was definitely two episodes of, of Happy Ever After that were recycled for Terry and June. Um, I can't remember what the second was now, but as soon as I watched it, I went... That is familiar. And that one episode of Terry and June where he gets bonked on the head by that suitcase on the train when he goes to Ipswich. It's an exact rip-off of that episode um, remember me from Bless This House. Like, like I said in that video to you, there's only subtle, subtle differences. And they are subtle. In the Terry, uh, in the Terry episode, he's on the train and he's bumped in the head by the suitcase. Um, uh, and he's also talking to his nice brunette called Mrs. Thatcher or Miss Thatcher in Bless This House is in the garage with Mike, Sally and Jean and he gets bonked on the head by the shelf by the because Mike can't put it up right now he, you know, he's putting his paint on but that's that's the only difference that's the only difference really because they both end up at home, both keep their, their, their wives' names wrong on purpose, as it turns out. Um, both go, do you, do you wear that in bed, Jane? It's June or Jean. Oh. Jane. Yeah, do we, but in, in terms of June, it's June, isn't it? Because they, they, they mirror each other almost uh, it's only subtle differences between them, like the setup where one's on the train, one's in the garage. But once they get back to their home, it's almost exactly like it was in Terry and June as it was for Bless's house. I don't know how, how the hell they got away with it because it looks like it's different writers. Um, and they both keep getting things wrong, and I don't remember this. Who are you? And then. In Terry and June, Malcolm turns up. Obviously, in Bless This House, it's Trevor. And at some point, the phone rings and the phone is not put back on the cradle. Same in both episodes. And in both episodes, the wives are on the phone downstairs. And just as they're about to hang up, they hear laughter upstairs. And basically, it's Sid to Trevor, Terry to Malcolm, fessing up that they were amnesiastic for a short while, but they loved the attention, so they played on it. And of course, in both cases, both are waiting a bonus from work. And both of their wives were promised a fur coat and a dress. And in both situations, June and Jean go upstairs and confront their Terry and Sid. And go, oh, what's this? Uh, here's your checkbook. And they sign it. It's almost a copycat 
on the Blissest House episode. He did go, but he saved it for um, his boss's wife, isn't it? Keeping it as... Keeping it... Uh, it's keeping it safe, but obviously doing things. Oh, no. it's for me! <laughs> no, 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 you're getting mixed up with a Christmas special with a fur coat. Yeah. No, it's the episode in Terry and June when he goes on that train to Ipswich and he gets talks at a nice brunette in the carriage and it, as the train pull, breaks to a stop, a suitcase comes flying off and knocks Terry out. In Bless His House, it's a shelf put by Mike that collapses and knocks Sid out. But apart from that, it's almost exactly the same. They mirror each other. Almost, it's like the, it's the same episode. Uh, you know, this, the, the 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 they're expecting a bonus. The mates turn up. The phone upstairs, not on the cradles or the wives, or on the phones with a conversation here. What's going off upstairs? And then when they realise they've been found out, they send the checkbooks so their wives can treat themselves. I said this episode is so familiar. It's like Oh right. Uh the Halloween spooktacular. Now the god Yes, the gods are smiling on you on this one. I I it, Yes, well I checked on my shift route as you know and Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the shift pattern. Now, the only day that wasn't available was Friday, which is the night shifts last night, my second day. So, I couldn't have that off. So, I booked the Thursday off and the Saturday, Sunday off. I submitted the holiday form and it should be approved. Now, however, if I worked it out correctly, you are on your early shift. Is your Saturday compulsory? What's that for spectacular? On the earlies, is your Saturday is that the is that a compulsory shift now? Well, I've got some good news for both of us. Uh, it is still overtime, so I thought that changing departments would mean me being on single time because that's the contract. But no, I am still on old contract, which is a surprise to me. Well, am I surprised? All right. That means a Saturday I can call it in. Well, the thing is, like, if you give that one Saturday a skip, which is a rarity, the idea... Oh, it's October. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, because okay. I know what you're like. I mean, because you're getting up slightly earlier, your fuel tank won't be as full. Uh, uh, I thought that already. Yeah, because I, I know... I. But I still remember coming back in that date, beamish. Um, you know, driving back, you're in back seat. Gush, Gush's seat back. I'm, I'm driving with the eyes like piss all as it snow, with which down to fucking match to keep them open. We get back. This is when we had the old tattoo with where the TV is now was that that was that chair with that footrest. You're in the little alcohol bit where there was a two seater settee and both of us to put it bluntly were physically fucked. I mean, I, I was losing to the world to live about half uh, quarter to ten. You, you were catching monster-sized blue bottles. You, you like a bloody 
a uh, basking shark catching krill. I'd 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 a panic with this phone because I I must have left it on. And I'm pressing the on button. There's no happening. I pull cable in. There's like a red circle with a, a lightning strike symbol. I thought, what the fuck's that? Don't tell me. The new phone that I got as part of the contract is fucked already. It turns out I checked on Google that if it's less than four uh, percent battery or one percent, uh, and then all of a sudden I had this ding do do ding. It fired up. I thought, all oh, right. So I've got the official charger and the official charging cable. Home to roast. Yeah, so I've been looking through my stuff. Oh, yes. I've watched all that. Like most of my minder. Sweeney. I watched all of them. Um, I haven't watched it for a long time. But uh, ha have you got uh, Regan as well? Is it in there? Yeah. Uh, um, is that is that the, just the first screen you have one and two? I'd say that's some shelving up. That's the shelving, then um, that DVD cabinet thing that I showed you. Two hundred DVDs it holds. I need about three of them then. I would take upstairs with the ones that I would watch now and again. Downstairs, I would have my red hot favourites. I mean, I, I'm due for a damn good clear out, I think. Uh, there's some films that I think I could live without. Uh, I watched that Senna documentary last night again. This one. Oh yeah. I tell you something. When when you first when I first, what it's really good. Um. When you first watch, you you, you think he's is an is an arrogant arsehole who just wants victory no matter what cost. It was very, but 
as it goes on, uh, he has a big fallout with Alan Prost, um, where they become bitter enemies and hate each other. Well, then in the end, they kind of make up, and he goes to Williams, where you know where Dem and Ill and that were. But the, the the season he went to Williams, the FIA said uh, all cars can't have the fancy electronic suspension and this and that because it's unfair to the teams who ain't got the money. But as as you can see with Senna, is we are all these aids. The cars kept on spinning out of control, and he he was not happy with the car. Oh, that's, that, that, that's the best one, that. Right. Okay. And it gets to... Um, he was he was friends with the Formula 1 doctor called Sid Watkins. He got to Imola, and he shows you the, the footage of Roland Ratzenberger talking, and then... Uh, it shows uh, Roland Ratzenberger smashing into the barriers and you can just see his, his head to one side like he's just limp and Senna's watching it on the cameras in the pits he's like oh my god and the, the better announcement saying um, uh, Roland Ratzenberger of Simtech Racing uh, was taking well, unfortunately well, um, succumbed to his injuries, and the night before, Senna just wasn't his usual self. He was concerned, and even everyone thought he would not turn up for the race because he wasn't happy with the car. He was a bit. He was very upset with the death of Roland Ratzenberger, but he said no. Even Sid Watkins said to him, "Look." Ayrton, give up. You've achieved what you wanted to achieve. Let's go fishing. I'll retire. Me, you'll go fishing. He says, I can't. I can't give it up. This is what I do. I can't give it up. And it showed you one of the early, uh, early laps where um, it, just, it just skidded off the bend. And they don't know why, because it should have done that. Smacked into the barrier, and looking, the stone column broke and hit him. Just it said if it'd been six inches above, above, or six inches below, he would have walked away. He said there was a broken bone on his body. To look at his body, it was not even marked. But Sid Watkins knew when he looked at him these neurological signs that it was a fatal, uh, and you know it. It was heartbreaking because I, I grew to love the guy in the end, and 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 that Alan Prost made peace as well. Really, really good documentary. Um, you know the Senna one. There's quite a few of me that can go to re charity um, charity shop. But if you, if you haven't got Regan, uh, Regan is like uh, you know it's seventies when they did like uh, one-off shows. Um, like armchair theatre or something and one of them was Regan and basically it was like it was turns out it took be like the pilot episode of the Sweeney in the end because after the show with Regan it was commissioned into a series But my, the Sweeney box set that I've got 
is um, is the original as it came out many months about no, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And if you put them together, it forms all four box sets form a mural of Regan and Carter over a car bonnet pointing the handguns. Oh, yeah. Right, look at my professionals, right? When Play.com was on the go, that was my go to place for DVDs at the time, not Amazon or eBay. Then, uh, box sets were a ridiculous price. I mean, I ordered the professionals because I wanted it so badly, it was like 90 quid. For some, yeah, but this is going back to. Yeah, well, I, I've still got my, my original ones from about well, about 20 years ago, I think. 15 years ago, at least. House of Whipcord. Oh, God, House of Whipcord. Uh, That's a big heat and terror. Oh, God. They're definitely... A, yeah. Blood Beast Terror. Yeah. Well, to complete your Sweeney, you need to get the to get Regan. Did you say you've got to? Uh, You've got all of the can. Well, you will be getting all of the Canstein trilogy. Well, now, yeah. I remember saying it. it well, one of our when it was our Yusma days, you're going. Guess what? I've got it. I've got it. I'm going. You haven't. I have. I have. You haven't. Countess Dracula is not part of the Kahnstein trilogy. That's that's about Countess Batrophy, based on a true story. I said that isn't the Kahnstein trilogy. The Kahnstein trilogy is the Vampire Lovers, which stars the gorgeous Madeline Smith and her pert tits. The, oh, oh she's sensational in that. Um, and of course, the late gorgeous Ingrid Pitt, who was in that bath. And George Cole, and as a cameo with, well, cameo ish of with Peter Cushing as a general. Um, the second one. So does that one feature Mike Raven? Um, the second one, Lust for a Vampire, stars Judy Matheson, or she now known as Judy Jarvis, um, the gorgeous Jut Stensgaard, uh, a supporting role by... Um, bloody hell... He's in uh, Fear in the Night and Dear John, and he's in um, Taste of Blood of Dracula. Ralph Bates, he's in it, and a cameo by um, him who plays the posh character in series 3 and 4 of Yus, my dear. Yeah, he's in, oh, he, he, he has already a cameo, and in uh, Lust for a Vampire, the woman who plays one of the teachers at the school who 
as I got the governess from that reporting the missing girl to the police, that was Susanna Lee, who was the friend of Imogen Hassel, who went to her house or cottage on the day they found her dead. But she still went to Kenya that day for a holiday, even though her friend was found dead from suicide. Uh, she died in America. And the last one, obviously, Twins of Evil. There's one actor, I don't know his name, but he's in all three of them. Um, in, uh, in, Regan, that's it. Pilot episode. Seven minutes. Yeah, it was part of the Armchair Thriller series. Armchair Theatre series. Oh, the original Armchair Cinema Pilot for the Sweeney. Yeah. I've got, I've got, oh, yeah, I've got it. Gold Sweeney section. I knew we've got it. Oh, uh, if I'll just slightly divulge before I need to put my glass up. Obviously, me and, me and Gusha, we, uh, we have this fancy of if we won the lotto business, right? Now, as you know, I shared the... I've got a thing about London. Uh, and then this two-bedroom cottage came up for sale, practically next door to the Crooked Billet pub. And we, we were talking about it today, and she went, oh, I don't, I'm not too sure. I said, well, hey, but we've got to win the bloody lottery anyway. Catch my eye tonight. Oh yes. House of Wax. Yeah. Well, we'll get we'll five minutes, then we'll 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 call it quick so you can watch your film, and then we'll have a proper one tomorrow or today. Um, nice bonus edition, this. A bonus edition of Sir Dennis. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Unexpected. Um. Cornwall, uh, if ever if ever won the brass, Cornwall, and I've found a few places where there's one. I mean, you're talking some one point two million. I mean, but oh, man, the views of this fucking harbour. And there's some like half that, even four hundred thousand pounds. I mean, still a lot of money, but um. That coastal villages like, and then there's one which is one point sub a million. Uh, it turns out it's a modern build, but the views, oh, oh man. So, if we do win the lottery, obviously, I would make sure that you're, you know, I'll, I'll look at the parents first, like, and then I'll sort you out with probably, uh. I'd fund you a new house in Scunthorpe if that's what you wanted. You know, a slightly bigger house for you. you no, know, reasonable. I'm not, 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 not talking like at that great big mega mansion halfway up Doncaster Road on right hand side. You know what I'm about, don't you? Eh? That house personally built that fucker. You know. You know what I'm on about, don't you? Yeah, that was built to spec, that was. Yeah. Well, a slightly bigger semi-detached house, like you see on Doncaster Road or further down, where, you know, with the bay windows. Uh, I'll make sure that, that was fully purchased for you. Um, but if we were lucky enough to get a nice place down in Cornwall, what I would do is we'll have to obviously you have to organise your time off and that and plan it. Obviously, I would. Uh, it's it's a pity that there weren't the flights to Newquay from Doncaster. So if, if they were from that Umberside, but I, I would organise your, your your transport. Um, 
uh, even if it was like um, getting the train so far, like so. You, but I would organise your transport so you could have a long weekend. And, you know what I mean? Down in Cornwall, if we were lucky enough. And I've, I've seen it. But one place we saw, it was a lovely, like, farmhouse type, semi detached building with a ruined barn. And um, when you look at the pictures, I says, an old couple's had that. Because it looks like it hasn't been lived in for about two years. And it's like, um, to me, it looks like they can't get rid of it because it's a, you know it's, it's a project and and i said to her you know so if it were possible if we had the money you know if we won the lottery um and i got sus a sneaking suspicion that that house hasn't been lived in for a year or two because what it ruins the buddy warped the the ceiling paint is is like a wallpaper is hanging down and the furniture's old and everything's old so i so i don't think it's been lived in for about two or three years and i and i said i said that would be a big project you would have to a first of all when it gets to the point you know, you say look how long has this been on sale you know because it could be from They've gone from a state agent to a state agent, you know, hoping that one of them will go, but it's never, it's never sold because it's too much, it's too, too much hassle. For those that got the brass, it'd be like a fucking money pit. So I so said something like that. You could say, look, tell them how much they're prepared to go down to just to get rid. I suspect this has been on the market for a long time. Then you have to get an interior designer and a builder. And it's like it'd be like a, it'd be like a year from start to finish. There's too much fucking about, you know what I mean? So if we were looking up, it would be Cornwall. Would be our resident of choice. Fucking far from black again. Right, uh, this has been a Brucey bonus. So I'll let you watch your film. Um, well, uh, oh, you film. Oh, <sighs> same as mine. Revenge of Frankenstein, lovely. Oh, uh, and if I can elaborate more on, uh, I want to hear your points, your version of, uh, saffron's. I think I've done enough on my part. No, oh, don't don't start. I I suffered in pain that 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 morning, that Sunday morning at, at the Austrian Inn. I I I suffered immense pain. I woke up. I thought, what's he doing? Like um, bathroom lights on. They fell back asleep again. Do you know what we were like? As I said, my video was about it. I remember when you broke out the then. Hot, 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 Dan Mac Hot Stag Chili. And I remember you eating it with gusto, like you had no feel in your mouth or you had all your nerves removed. And you were, you, were, you were shoving it in like someone chucking sand into a fucking cement mixer. And I'm going... I'm used to it. I feel my mouth juggling. And I'm going, I'm going to sneeze. Well, I remember the Saturday morning. That was it something like, that must be a Saturday morning. <laughs> the Saturday morning where you must be, oh, I remember something where you went to the, it was a Saturday, so I'm sure it was a Friday for some reason. You have gone to work, or oh, had you? I got to work, you was left in the house, you had to shit, well, tried to shit. 
that off. I just remember waking up on your settee um, with a feeling... Because we, we had spectrally rice, and then two hours later, three, four hours later, we had it again. I remember, remember one time, it was the Stag Chili Challenge. I don't, I don't know if it was that. Two, two tins each. All I, all I remember is waking up on your, I like, oh, it was, it was like my stomach was, it, it was like I had a flesh-eating bug and mixed in with acid and hot molten lava and someone poking my stomach with a hot metal rod and there were like 14 rats trying to eat their way out. Oh, the pain. Oh, my God. God, it was incredible. And yeah, I tried to have a shit, and I'm like, whatever come out, it, it's like my arsehole, like third degree burns. And I went to Morrison's, got a few bits, maybe some painkillers, I can't remember. Went to Britain to my granddad, had uh, another shit at, go, at the now defunct Golden's Coffee Shop. And, I, and my arsehole was on fire. And I thought, that's it. On the way home, I went the Beverly way. And I thought, come on, call it Beverly. Get some Bluetooth headphones to listen to the music on the works bus. Sorry. You know, I got within a mile of Beverly Town Centre. And my stomach was, oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Ooh. I got out of the car, let off a little fart, and it was all, it went, and I thought, oh, I'm all right. And that's when I was halfway down the A63. I was in tremendous pain. I pulled into a service station, which is a toilet, and I did that message to you, uh, Jeff, you can stick your stag chilli right up your fucking ass." Right. Yeah. Yeah, but it's me. Yeah, but the point I'm trying to make is that this is you, the man who's got a stomach that was created in Chernobyl. We gets to brick. We gets to brick lane. We've, we've been constantly hassled by every curry house on that on that stretch. Manager special, manager special ends in 10 minutes. We eventually cave in, go into the saffrons. We are shocked by the single platter of rice we had to share between us. I don't know what we ordered, whether it was a madras or a vindaloo, I can't remember. Probably vindaloo. Because we had the Vindaloo at the Spice Garden in Bournemouth the night before. And it was more like a Madras than a Vindaloo. It was edible. It was nice. It was, it was nice, it was pleasant, but it, wasn't, it didn't have that oomph. And I just remember looking across at you and you were like, within minutes you were hiccuping. You were dripping from the nose. You were sweating like... Um, a rapist in a hospital wing um, in a heat wave with no air conditioning and you were <sighs> drip, drip, drip and I'm going very spicy <sighs> and I thought this is the man who can have dynamite hot stag chilli and, and not suffer any penalties with his ass the next day. I'm like, going, I don't believe it. And I, I didn't suffer. I'm like, I'm, well, it's whew, hot in it. You know, but... Oh, that, I'm going to be in a bath. It was a, it was a fart. I don't that bastard was a fart. Well, but the thing is, I, I mean, I, I suffered a little bit, but not as bad as you. It was. It was similar to... It was 
the same heat as a Vindaloo, Vindaloo Turbo. Or a Tindaloo. Tindaloo, yeah. That's a Tindaloo, yeah. I remember I went to, not the chapel at the Bic, but the chapel at uh, East Cowick or West Cowick, and he said, personally, I would try a Tindaloo first, because Baal is designed for those that have had one lag or too many. I went, all right, then. and I, I mean, the Tindaloo there was bloody volcanic. And the next day again, pain. Oh, and you know you have one of those shits where you just where you, you just lose all sensation or feeling in your ass. Or you can feel in your your asshole this heat. You don't know if you finish having a shit or not. Um, That's the thing. You want to taste it, not to have pure heat in your mouth. It's more the heat from your ass. That's the main thing. But that that. <laughs> That morning at the, well, the other morning when I woke up in, uh, and I last night, I think, and I'm like, oh, jeez, oh, like a little, two little fucking nuggets of Maltesers fell out, and I went back to bed, but the pain was there, I went again, and then the Maltesers got slightly bigger, maybe Rebels, and then I went a third time, and it was like little cocktail sausages, and then went a fourth time, and I like, and then pain was still there. I went a fifth time. This time I had, is what I can class as a normal shit. And then the pain after about 20 minutes subsided. And then eventually I got to sleep. And then you you must have suffered at that pub in Burnham. But, oh. Yeah, it's partly my fault because I was pissing about on the phone as well. But but before we go back, before we go, definitely before we go, so you can watch your film. Um, last week or week before, when we had us pizzas from Tesco's, and I got some really hot spicy sauce, and I put dollop 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 all all the pizza. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, well. I set us off, I felt fine. I get a main set of traffic lights near um, the T junction, turn left towards where you did the most excellent version of Man by Genesis. Now called the Fusion Bar. Fine. I get to literally without 100 yards from the Texaco garage near the butchers. And I oh, something's not right here. Uh, and I thought, what should I do? I thought, no, it's not too bad. I think I'll be all right. So I went past the last serviceable toilet and I'm travelling up, turns up by the Green Tree garage and the pub and I go that way as if I went through that field Woodhouse towards the prison. And all the while, I can feel something's not right in my stomach. I'm going, oh, no. Oh. And literally, as I get to the area where they turn off for the Moorlands uh, holding centre is, and the Lindon prison, for about two minutes, oh, ah, Jesus, oh, my God, oh. I thought, if I had some toilet paper in Kabul, I'd have pulled over somewhere and had a shite. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, the pain subsided, thank goodness. But it's like, imagine when you're in a when you're in a dream sequence and and you're running, and but. In this case, you're running this safety and you've got shit, so you're not running on, on solid ground, you're running in quicksand. It's like every mile seemed like 10. And I'm like, going, oh, the, the venue, oh, oh, Jesus. And I guess I gets to this uh, little mini roundabout where to the left of the pub called the Blue Bell, 
I turn right there to go into towards um oh I forgot what to call it now, Orkley or something. Uh and I'm getting nearer and nearer and my my arsehole's going bloop, bloop. I get into the staff car park, put the car in, Barry gets up, I parks up, I dashes towards there's a there's a building there, a single story building or there's some upstairs rooms called Hayford House. I use my pass to get in, sat on the toilet and shut my brains out. <laughs> my my I, my arsehole went on fire. I I messaged uh, one of my teammates. I says, "I'm in trap. I'm in trap too. I'm here because it's like it's like it's at least another two and a half minute walk from there to the terminal." But as and that's when I realised I made the fatal mistake of having spicy sauce the night before when you're in an early start. You never do that because you can guarantee when you least want it to happen, you want to have a shite. Right. I'm going to see how this... Oh, don't. Honestly, it was it was fucking painful, Jeff. Uh, because once you, once you go past that Texaco garage near the butchers... There is a set of toilets at the bus stop near the park gates, but they're locked up. So once you leave, once you go past that Texaco garage, you have no public facilities to use, no public conveniences. And that moment near the prison when my stomach felt like it was going to dissolve in acid, I was open and praying that I would make it to the staff car park and I would dash like Mo Farah to the toilets in Hayford House. And no and no sooner did my, my arse cheeks touch that toilet seat than I felt like my whole world fell out of my arsehole. You know, it happened once, and you know, I will cut after this, when we lived at the flat and I, and I I walked down with Gushy to the bakery, it took us about 20 minutes from the flat. You, you would have liked it at the flat, not far from Fall North train station. And on the way back, it shouldn't, normally I just wanted to pee. And, uh, but this time I thought I wanted to poo. And honestly, there were times I nearly dashed into a dark corner, pulled pants down and had a shite. <laughs> But uh, on this one occasion, but obviously the danger is as you're walking back to me, you can feel because you, you had a chance or to wipe your ass that you, you feel it start to set like concrete. But I managed to hold on, even though I was in crippling pain by the time I got back to the fieldside flats. I kid you not, I buzzed my way in t- into the through the communal door, up the one set of steps to our level, which was on the first floor, I could get, I could not get my key in at all fast enough. Shut the door, and it was a second door on the left. And I got in, sat down on the toilet, and I'm not joking, as, as my arsehole is lowering onto the toilet seat, it shot out like a bloody rockers. It was like a, not being too disgusting or graphic, it was like a, you know, like that, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It was almost, it was almost it, like... It sucked out. Oh, it, it, it came out before I even put my arsehole up seat. <laughs> but thankfully, it hit the bullseye, there was no mess. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna curtail this now, Jeff, because we've had a we've had a Sir Dennis Hodge, but um, yes, yeah, part one. Part yeah, yeah. Well, tomorrow's the proper one where we'll have, we'll venture back to Bournemouth and London and shit, and um, 
golden bladder, whatever. Oh, 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 oh Jesus. Uh, two pints, please. A pint of stout and a pint, oh, a pint of uh, two pints of stout. Oh, 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 it's in there. Honestly, if I'd have sneezed or coughed, I'd, I'd, the sea level would have risen by about four foot. Right, let's curtail this now. <laughs>